Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. Look, we're on time this week. Crazy, I know, but you know, we're back on track. So earlier in the week, I showed you how to create a basic first person shooter effect using a GoPro camera. And considering the view count on that bad boy, I guess nobody thought it was that great. I have a GoPro Hero 2 and the picture is just okay. The point I wanted to show you is that cool effects are possible on any camera. You just gotta blend them properly. Now, that's out of the way. On to today's more advanced FPS effect. For this one, we'll be shooting our elements separate and comping them all together. This gives you a lot more control, but that doesn't mean it's any harder. Some of it's actually easier. In order to achieve this effect, you'll need a backplate shot like this example here. I shot this while on lunch at work, as our building's pretty old and I like the look below. Our next element is shooting our targets, I mean actors. To make things easier, I would shoot the backplate with them in the shot, acting at the motions of being riddled with bullets, just to avoid another step. But since none of my colleagues wanted to play dead, I'll be playing my own victims on green screen and then comping them in later. In either case, we'll be comping in our gunner after the fact, shooting that part on a green screen also, like in this example here. Another good tip is to have a clip of your backplate your gunner can watch in order to better time his action, say on an iPad or something. I bought a better sized gun this week, but as you can see, the sight's in a really stupid position, so a scoping up effect will have to wait until maybe next time. As for the last FPS effect, you'll need some muzzle flashes and some blood hits. I'll be cracking open Action Essentials 2 for them tings, so let's get started. Alrighty then, let's get started by tracking our footage. Head over here and click Track Camera. Then head up to the effects menu and click analyze. This can take some time depending on how long the shot is, so I'm skipping ahead until it's ready. Once it's done, you'll notice that you have tracking points all over your footage. From there, we'll head up and click create camera to add a 3D camera to our comp. As a demonstration, I'm gonna select a marker and click create null. This will create a null and 3D space we can link an asset to. In this example, I'll be using a shooting target image. I'll drag and drop the image into my comp, check this box to make it a 3D layer, and then it's time for some adjusting. Hit P and let's move the target back in Z space, just to a point where it hovers over our null. We'll then pair at the target to said null, and as you can see, it's now moving with our camera in the shot. Let's turn on motion blur for the comp and for the layer for a better look. Pretty nice, eh? Right, now that we've tracked our footage, let's add some bad guys. Okay, so I've got my first bad guy all keyed out and ready to go with stellar acting on my part. I've also shifted our target out of the way so he can take its spot. So like with the target before, we'll drag him into the comp, check the 3D layer on and position him into place and then turn on motion blur. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. Although I might adjust him a little just to fit him in a bit better. To better sell the effect of me being in the shot, I'll add a shadow using RG Shadow from Red Giant's effects suite. You can download a demo in the description in the video. I'll adjust the angle of the shadow using the controls and then change both the opacity to around 45 and the softness to 40. Mm, much better. I'll then delete the target, rinse and repeat those steps to add our second bad guy via the sped up footage. Now, these guys are getting shot, so we better add some blood hits. To do this, we'll reopen the actor's comp, head to the point where they start to act getting shot grab our blood hits and drag them on in and position them accordingly. We'll then skip forward a few frames, add the next blood hit and so on and so forth until you have enough hits in place. Next step is to bloody up that shirt so your actor actually appears wounded after those blood hits disappear. In order to do this, we'll add a new adjustment layer, draw a mask in the shape of some blood spatter and then from there we'll head up to effect, color correction and add a tint changing that dull white to a bloody red. We'll then dial that tin amount to around 75% and feather that mask out to make it appear like it's soaking through the shirt. Next, let's scrub to the point of the first blood hit and trim the adjustment layer using the old Control shift d and delete that excess. Oops, I trimmed a little too much. From there, we'll hit P and hit the stopwatch on position, going frame by frame to match your actor's movements. I use the top of the comic on my shirt as a point of reference to keep the stain in place. Once you're done, turn on motion blur for the layer and the comp. We'll also hit T and keyframe the opacity to fade in over a few frames, just so it looks like the blood's absorbing through the shirt. Repeat these steps for all your bad guys. We've added our bad guys, time to break out them guns. 
Before we add the gun, let's consolidate our background plate by right clicking and pre-comping all those assets. I've already keyed my gun footage so it's time to drop it on in and scale it down if you need to. I've already synced my gun's motion up with the actors, so let's add our muzzle flushes. Same one as last week, y'all. We'll drop it into the comp, and then we'll sync it up with the first blood hit and scale it up to the right size. I'll also change the transfer mode to add to give it a little bit more oomph. Next, just like last week, we'll hit the stopwatch on position and then go frame by frame to marry that flash up with the barrel of the gun. Now that that's done, we'll add our shells ejecting. Unlike last week, I'm going to solo the layer of the round and then use the rotation controls to make sure they're firing at the right angle. I kind of forgot that step. Hmm? Since we have no opening on this weapon, I'm going to eject them off screen. You know, sort of close to the corner. Hit P on the stopwatch and add a keyframe at the point of the gun and then add another one or two to take that shell off screen. You can space them out if you need to, depending on the look you're going for. Once done, duplicate the shell layer, and since we keyframed each muscle flash, it makes it easy to match it up with the shape layers like so. Okay, last step. Let's add some light fall off to the weapon during the muzzle flash. Add a new adjustment layer, then head up to effect, color correction, and click exposure. Crank it up until it blows out the image a little. Mine was about 1.35. Then grab the pen tool and draw a rough mask around the gun and feather it out around 25 pixels. Scrub to the point of the first shot and trim the excess of the adjustment layer. Hit P on the keyboard and hit the stopwatch on position and animate the adjustment layer based on the movements of the gun. Hit T on the keyboard and hit the stopwatch on opacity going frame by frame, cranking that opacity up to 100 when the flash is on screen and then back down to zero when it's not. I ended up adding two zero keyframes to every 100% frame. Follow along with all that jazz and you get something like this. Hey, that's a nice gun. Go, oh, I've only got two days to return. So that's a Call of Duty style FPS effect. Once you get all of your elements shot, it's really pretty damn simple to come together, especially if you shoot those actors in camera. Now don't forget to tune in next week as we'll be tackling some Pokemon reveal effects. You can make it even easier by hitting that subscribe button you won't even have to search. It's a no-brainer. And while you're there, you can hit those like and share buttons and that'd be super awesome. We just topped 700 subs, guys, and I appreciate all your support and comments. And as always, keep learning.